Napuhi drum drives are exquisite. If you're not looking out a viewport or at a sensor display when the jump happens, you'd be utterly unaware of anything happened at all. For those that did happen to be watching, well, it's failed to explain the ethereal beauty of the rapid transition. While the Napui are widely considered to have the finest jump drives in the galaxy, every species with the technology, of course, has polished their implementations to the utmost of their ability. Many have the slightest of tremors or a subtle shift in spectrum that is not quite pleasing to the eye. It is undeniably frustrating to them that their jump drives are not as good as the Napui's, but take pride in their excellent craftsmanship elsewhere. For example, Guigal hulls are believed to be indestructible. They have been flown, without a crew on board of course, through stars and put in orbit around black holes. In practice, the only vulnerabilities present in a Guigal ship are due to the small gaps made for sensors and the larger ones for entrances. Entrances are needed in Guigal ships, for they lack transporter technology. Many millennia ago they attempted to develop it, but abandoned it once it became clear they could not perfect it to their level of satisfaction. While now Pui Hals are undeniably elegant, for what species would travel between the stars without crafting to the best of their ability? They do not come close to those of the Guigal. Alut hulls are also of fine quality, but they are respected throughout the galaxy for their superb weapon systems. They are the only species known to have ever destroyed a Guigal ship, having targeted antimatter streams directly into the minute gaps created for the ship's sensors. It is apparent to all that targeting the entrance would have had the same destructive effect and been much easier to achieve. The Alut wanted to leave no doubt as to their prowess. Naftali lacks space rain capabilities, and were first contacted by the Nafui, who are amongst the best travelled in the galaxy. Having made first contact with so many sapient species, the Nafui were startled when their plans were thrown into disarray, as the Naftali immediately detected their ship's appearance. Naftali gravimetric sensors are so precise, it is alleged they can detect the shifting of sand dunes on their neighbouring planet. Many less developed species have been first encountered when they have only yet to master fire. They will harness fire to its fullest and grandest abilities, ornate pyres, intricate smoke signals, and endlessly more expertly applied uses of fire's powerful potential. The first human ship was encountered on the edge of the Urarangi system. Unusual fluctuations in the main star's light output had gained the interest of Nafui, Guigal and Elut, and each had dispatched a ship. Whether that's also what attracted the human ship is in dispute. Little else is. The human ship appeared approximately, but very much not precisely, in the centre of the triangle formed by the three ships of the Nafui, Guigal and Elut. The jump appeared to all of them to be a near disaster, and each immediately sent out messages of assistance, assuming something had gone terribly wrong. Massive and seemingly random spikes occurred across the Ian spectrum. Hard radiation unevenly poured out of the space now occupied by the human ship. But before the others of hell finished broadcasting, the EM eruptions began subsiding and the radiation ceased. A non directional broadcast came from the human ship. It was a terribly crude series of first contact procedures. The Nafui took pity and intervened, greatly accelerating the process of finding a common means of communication. Initially it was assumed this was the very first jump conducted by the humans, but once communication advanced, it became evident that while this was their first contact with other sapiens, they had been exploring the galaxy for several centuries. Attempts to understand why their jump drive behaved so poorly were initially met with confusion and misunderstanding, and upon clarification with indignation. Once the radiation and EM burst had subsided, the hull of their ship was found to be immensely lackluster. By a very loose definition, it appeared to be spaceworthy, but not in a way any species could conceivably take pride in. And yet the humans clearly did, boasting without prompting that this was the best ship in their fleet. That word, fleet, had taken considerable effort to translate. It definitely referred to multiple ships, yet in precisely what way was initially unresolved. Attempts to clarify this resulted in the humans asking if it was okay if the other ships from their fleet jumped here. Unanimous assent was given, with the expectation the human ship would jump away and then return with another ship or two. However, this is not what occurred. Instead, horrendously ill-looking forces were exerted, which somehow folded space, and then a poorly calibrated and extremely high energy transmission was sent. 
A few moments passed and then five ships, similar in design to the first but smaller, jumped in. So it appeared the humans had six ships in total. Why they were all in this part of the galaxy was peculiar, but then so much about this species seemed to be. Six ships was an unusually large sum for a species that just had first contact, but less than the Gwigal and Alut, which each had eight, and the Nafui, which had twelve, the largest known collection of ships in the galaxy. This was duly communicated to the humans in order to impress upon them their relative standing, although the particularly low quality of their ships made this an even less impressive comparison. It was at this point that the humans once more tried to communicate the meaning of fleet. A fleet is a collection of ships, all under one hierarchical command. At first it appears there was no misunderstanding, although the hierarchical nature was a helpful addition. This fleet had a name, which could not be translated in any meaningful way. The important part was it belonged to a particular region of space and relative to the size of the Milky Way, not a particularly large portion either. Humans had explored a meaningful portion of the Milky Way, and had established multiple fleets. At first we thought they might have perhaps three fleets each, with six ships, giving them a staggering 18 ships in total, although of embarrassingly poor craftsmanship. The precise number of fleets was not told to us for reasons we can only speculate on. It is evidently far more than three. To make matters worse, the number of ships in each fleet varied, but we were told the one before us was quite small. We were baffled. How could this be when the humans seemed barely capable of making ships which functioned at all? So we asked them. We're quite confident the translation was correct. No matter how perplexing it may be. Quantity over quality.